Right, okay, um, this is a video that's going to change everything. It's a video on finance, and it's the bit that I think, in general, people lose the most marks. And the best way of getting better at finance is to do it again and again and again. So once you finish this video, try and do the questions without my help, and then do it again, and try it at least twice more before you get in the exam. Okay, so this is the first topic with finance, which is sources of finance. The question will always be asked exactly the same way. It will always be suggest and evaluate ways in which you could raise finance. Um, right, so let's go quickly. The people who do badly in this will just say three or four different sources of finance. Um, people who do well will say them. So this is going to be your structure. I'll just zoom in a bit. You will say... Um, let's, for example, you might say loans. You might say a loan might be a source. A grant might be another one. Um, family and friends... And then, uh, what would be another one? And, right, you could sell assets. Another good one would be sell shares. Okay. Some people, some people will just say those five things and they'll end up getting two marks just for saying them. You're not going to get any more than two marks just for saying them. You've got to go in much more detail. So the next level up, what some other people will do is they'll say what each of these things are. So they'll say a loan is when you borrow money from the bank, and you'll get that. You'll get some more marks for saying that. So a loan, say what it is. So with all of them, you try and say what it is. I, mean, I know it sounds a bit weird when you do that. For example, if you're saying what family and friends are, it's kind of dodgy to, to say, oh, one option is family and friends. Family and friends are people you're friends with and your family. You know, you sound a bit stupid. So you, you try and say it a little bit more so it's quite clear what you're talking about. Um, it's a lot easier for things like grants, where you'd say a grant is money given to you by the government um, to try and produce more of something. So first of all, you, you give the example, you say what it is, and then you've got to say what's good about it. So what would be good about a loan? You know, one of the big advantages for a loan is you get the money fairly quickly. You get the money fairly quickly because... Um, when you ask for the, the money from the bank, they're able to transfer that money almost straight away to you um, once you've been approved. Um, another good thing, for, um, and even better than saying quickly, um, I would say that um, good things about bank loans is you can normally get quite a large amount. So um, they might say to you, we'll let you have, um, I don't know, like 50 grand, so you get quite a lot. And what Miss Jones said, which is a really nice one, another good thing about a bank loan is that you, you basically have to pay back maybe like £200 a month. So you know exactly how much you're paying back per month, which is very much easier to do a cash flow. So you're able to plan for how much money you um, are going to be paying back. So that's what's good about a bank loan. Then you've got to say, now if you just say the good thing, you're going to get a maximum of maybe five. After you say the good thing, you've got to say the bad thing. So what's the biggest problem with the bank loan? And the key thing is you have to pay back um, interest. And the smaller a company you are, the less you know, reliable a company you are, the more interest they're going to make you pay. So for, so for a lot of companies, a loan isn't a great idea. OK, secondly, we have got a grant. Now, a grant is when a, um, a government gives you money to try and produce something. For example, um, the government gave Amazon about £8 million to set up in Wales because they wanted to create jobs. So what can be good about a grant is the government might give you it um, with, and you don't have to pay it back, so don't... So you don't have to pay back. So that is a good thing about a grant. Um, it's not always true that, but sometimes it is that you don't actually have to pay it back. But the problem is, the R but for grants, because they sound fantastic that you don't have to pay them back, it says two big issues with grants. One, they're hard to get. And don't just say that. They're hard to get because the UK government haven't got much money, so how can they keep on giving out grants? So they have to make it very difficult to get them. And the other big problem for the, a grant is... Um, there might be a lot of um, things you have to do for the government if you, if you take on that grant. So there might be certain rules in place when you actually take it on. For example, the grant might say you have to stay in Wales. Um, or it might say you have to spend um, your money on workers. So the problem with the grant is you're not going to be able to spend the money on exactly what you want. You might have to do what the government tells you to, and lots of people don't like that. So, so far, we have had good things and bad things about loan, a grant, we've said what it is, and then we've said what's good and bad about it. And personally, if you did one more, you'd be in good shape. 
But as always with these eight markers, you want to get so many marks, the examiner has to give you eight. So I'm going to go for two more. Um, one, pe one that people like going for is family and friends. And you'd have to have good things and bad things about family and friends. The good thing about family and friends is they, you may be given more time to pay back. Remember, you can't just say more time to pay back. You've got to say why. So the reason is because your family might be more flexible. Like, I know when I borrow my money off my mum, I'll be like, mum, can I pay it back in a year? She'll go, go on then. Then a year, the year's come and I go, mum, it's happened again. And she gives me another year because she's nice. So sometimes they're a lot more flexible, families are, because obviously they like you. Um, the problem, though, with family and friends is there is going to come a time when my mum's going to go, in this, the dream's over. We're not going to give you any more money. We hate you. So it can end up causing... Um, issues and meaning that you don't end up having as nice a family life as you used to okay so we've got one more two more really i'm going to go with sell shares because i think shares is a good one it's an easy one to say what's good about selling shares is you can get capital um i'm going to say is it easy i think you can get quite a lot of capital so you can get a lot quickly especially if you become a um, PLC, and you sell on the stock exchange. I mean, obviously, a lot of companies aren't able to do that. But the downside is that, what's the downside of selling shares, is that you lose control. And that means you won't get to do exactly what you want with the business. Now, I'm going to say this just once. Every single time that you do a point, whether it's plus or minus, properly explain what you're saying. Don't just go half the way. Explain it all the way through, and then you will do well. Um... That would get you almost full marks. As always with these things, when it's an eight marker, to get the final mark, you need to do a final judgment and say which ones you think will be best and why. And that will get you eight out of eight. Right, here we are. We are going to do the first of the finance things. Um, hopefully you'll find this very exciting. It's not, I'm not, it's not guaranteed you'll find it exciting, but we're going to be doing cash flow. So I am going to get myself a calculator. So I've got my calculator, um, and I'm going to do cash flow forecasts. Now, before we start with cash flow, these are the things that you should know about cash flow. Key bits, it is a forecast. What does that mean? It means these numbers have never actually happened. This is to say prediction of what the business thinks is going to happen. So the best way to define a cash flow forecast is, is a prediction of... Now, cash flow is all about prediction of money in, and money out. That is basically what a cash flow is. Right. So, let's look at this cash flow example here. The best way to spot that it's a cash flow in the exam is to, I mean, obviously, though, is to actually read it and see that it says cash flow. Um, but also, it's easy to see that it's a cash flow when you look at this and you see um, different months. When you see different months, you know it's going to be a cash flow. Um, and inflow... That's a posh way of saying, what's the inflow of posh way of saying? That is a posh way of saying money in. And outflow is a posh way of saying, oh, don't, that's in the way, don't I? What's that? It's a posh way of saying money out. Right. Now, I wish I hadn't just drawn over that, so I'm going to rub it out slightly. Right. This is a bit that a lot of people seem to not realise. Net cash flow is money in, take away, money out. Right, and the last thing is opening bank, bank balance and then closing bank balance. Okay, what they'll ask you to do is, so here it says, give another term which could be used instead of inflow, you could just say money in. The other one is, um, you could say receipts. Um, so sometimes they put receipts instead of money in. Um, right, okay, so from the figures, we've got to try and calculate the net cash flow for December and the closing bank balance for March. So before we do that, let's make sure we actually understand how to do a cash flow, right? Inflow, that's all the money in. So this in October, they got 6,000 in. Outflow is all these numbers put together. So all these numbers here should add up to outflow. This is all the money out. And net cash flow is... Inflow, 6,000, takeaway, 6,500. So it's come out as minus 500. What do they sometimes do instead of a minus? They sometimes have brackets, but here they've given it as a minus, right? Now, if the bank 
opened with zero and they made minus 500 that month, what are they going to end the month with? They're going to end the month with minus 500. And the other thing that happens with the cash flow is if you end a month with minus 500, the next month you're going to start off with the same amount. Okay? So I'll now go through November with you. The money in was 7,000. The outflow was 5,500, which means they must have made 1,500 pounds that month. But they started the month with minus 500, so they end it with 1,000. Now remember, if you end it with 1,000 pounds, you're closing bank balance, it means the next month you're going to open with the same amount, so 1,000. Okay, so all they want you to do is to, there's two question marks here, there's that one and that one, and you've got to try and put the answers in there. Right, how are you going to find this one? They had inflow of 8,000 and an outflow of 6,000, so what must have they made that month? They must have made 2,000 pounds. Whoops. Are yeah, people happy with that? Because it is, um, it is 8,000 in and 6,000 out, so they must have ended up making 2,000. That's the first one. And you know that's right, because 2,000 take away 1,000 equals... Oh, sorry, 2,000 plus 1,000 equals 3,000 there. Okay, the next one. They made £2,000 that month, and they opened with £2,000. So what must they close, close with? It's going to be those two numbers put together, so it is £4,000. Right, that is the first um, break-even. Not break even, what the hell am I talking about? That is the first um, cash flow. Let's go on to the second one. Right, here's the second cash flow. And the only difference here is, um, instead of giving you loads of months, they've only given you three months. So it looks a little bit different. And they're giving you some numbers at the top, which actually make life a lot easier. So sometimes they're going to give you numbers. And if you want to, you can use these numbers to make life easier. If you don't, it's up to you. Um, but I would always read the stuff up there because it actually does make it easier. Right, the big difference is this time they want you to get six numbers. Um, right, so some of these numbers are really hard to get, so you've got to try and think about it a little bit before you get to them. Right, let's do the first one. They had um, total out that month. Okay, so totally they got 6,000 that month, the first month. Let's get a little arrow out. 6,000 in, 3,500 out, so that made it had net, net cash flow 2,500, right? So that's how much money they made that month, but they ended in the bank with 4,000. So if they only made two and a half grand that month and they ended with 4,000, how much money must they had in the bank already? They must have had 1,500 in the bank because, that's a rubbish colour to use, um, because 3,500, sorry, 2,500 plus 1,500 equals 4,000. That's the first number. Now, the second one, you can actually get their total amount of money in is these two things put together. There's 4,500 there. What needs to be added to that to get to 9,000? What I did to make it easy for myself, I typed in 9,000, take away 4,500, and that equals 4,500 there. Now, remember, I don't care how good you think you are at maths. Make sure you do a... Um, use a calculator okay the next one materials it's, you can't actually do the materials one very easily without you looking at the data above um, right here where am I going Take away right I'm going to tell you two ways of doing this one way which I think is easiest and then the other way which, where you can actually use this data to make it easy on you um, I don't mind which way you do it but Right, at the, mi at the minute, if I don't look at the information above, I can't find how much material sh should be. I can't find it. I could guess, but I'd be wrong. Um, if you actually read the information in a second, you're going to see the information tells you the answer. But we're going to carry on for a second. I'm going to pretend for the minute I can't do materials, so I'm going to leave materials out. Right? If I can't find materials, I can't say how much is total out, because I, I can't add up all those numbers to get a total out, so I can't do that one. If I can't do that one it gets harder to do net cash flow one, apart from it is possible, because they opened with 4,000 and they closed with 8,000. So how much money must have they made that month? They must have made 4,000, if that makes sense. Now, if they made 4,000, they got 9,000 in. How much must they have to get out to only make 4,000? The out must have been 5,000, because... 9,000 take away 5,000 equals 4,000. So now I've got all these numbers, it becomes a lot easier. 
If my total out was 5,000, and these two numbers add up to 2,000, how much must the materials be in? Materials must have been um, 3,000. And then the final number, there, um, where am I? That's meant to be a three, by the way. Um, don't go away. Final number, um, where am I going? Right, this month, they had minus 1,000 as their net cash flow. But they started with 8,000. How much must they end with? They must end with 7,000. Okay? So that's how you get the six marks. The other option is reading the actual text. And it says, Bella pays for materials in cash the month after sales to customers. The cost of materials is half the value of the sales. Right. So, in the amount of... Oh, how are we going to do this? She pays for the materials the month after selling sales to customers. So, for example, in October, she pays for the materials from September in October. So, in September, it, she, her sales were 3,000 up here. And it's saying that the cost of materials is half that amount the next month. So, if, they, if she paid 3,000 sales in September, what would her cost be in October for uh, materials? Her cost would have been 1,500 because it's half that amount as you can see there. Next one, in, uh, where am I going? How am I going to work out how much she had to pay in November? Right, in, in October she had 6,000, so it's going to be half that amount, so it should be 3,000. As you can see, the answer is 3,000. And then December, the month before, it should have been half of 9,000, and it's 4,500. So you could have used this information to actually get the answer, and once you got that answer, you could have done it all the other way around, it'd have been, it'd been really easy. But all I'm saying is make sure you actually read this thing first to see if there's anything that could be of use to you. Right, um, this is my favourite question. If it comes up, um, how to improve your cash flow situation, you can be delighted because this is the easiest way to get six marks. Sometimes they even have this being eight marks. So the reason why it's only six marks is because it's saying discuss two. Other times I'll say discuss different ways, which could allow you to get even more marks. But anyway, two ways. You have to say your method. So you say, first of all, you say your method to improve the cash flow. Then you're going to say why it's good. Then you're going to come up, what's the problem with it? And as usual, you're going to come up with a final judgment at the end. So it'll be a final judgment. Right, so looking back at the um, cash flow diagram you did earlier, what's one method they could use? Now, one thing they could do is they could try and reduce the cost of materials. Right? And that's always one you can use, cost of materials. And you can say, why is it a good idea to reduce the cost of materials? Now, if you look back, the cost of materials are actually quite high. They're half the cost of the actual product. And you could say that. So you could say they're quite expensive. So that's one reason why you want to reduce them. And then you can go to town on why they're bad. The reason why it's a bad idea is because um, the quality could go down. If the quality goes down, that means people won't buy their products. If people aren't buying your product, that means you're going to get less sales and therefore less profit. So you could really explain that one through. A second option is to um, reduce wages. Now, wages is a really good one because, again, wages is going to be likely to be quite high. So, again, you can say wages are really expensive. Um, and the problem with this one is if, I can't really think of any other way of saying why wages are a good one to cut, apart from if you want to go really clever... And at the minute, the economy is doing really badly. So if the economy is doing badly, people will take any wage. They'll be happy to have a job. So you could say people might accept it. So they'll accept it because they can't... Um, they have no other option. It's right. What's that? But the problem is, wages are... Um, well, it's quite easy to say this one. With wages, if you, have got, if you give someone a really low wage, how are they going to feel? They're going to feel a lot less motivated. Now, to explain this through, they're going to be less motivated. Therefore, when they're less motivated, they're going to work less hard. Um, when they're working less hard, that means that they're going to not produce as much. So you can say that. Um, another thing is, um, with low wages, what else is the problem with low wages? That'll do. Okay, a third thing. You could say they could advertise more. Because that's a really good thing to say. Um, What's the good thing about advertising more? Um, more people will see your product.
Right, the problem with advertising more, though, is obviously quite easily, it is um, expensive. So if you gave those three reasons, oh no, I've, just, you know, I've done three here, how many are you actually going to do? You're just going to do two of them. So any of those three will do. Um, it's really important to say what it is, what's good about it, and then say what's bad about it. Right, to keep on going on the cash flow forecast, just if you're thinking, I've had enough of this, um, it's good to keep on going. Um, this is another cash flow forecast, and this time it's Janine's, which is very exciting. Now, what did we say? Sometimes it's worth reading this text. Um, so no matter what, even if you think, oh, I can't be bothered, I don't want to sir, still read it, just in case. It might be useful. Okay, the first question they've asked is, what is a cash flow forecast? Um, and that's all you've got to say is there's going to be it's two marks available. So as long as you say it is a prediction, a prediction of money in and money out. And I might say for a business, and I just said, I heard this off Miss Jones, I might say it for a business, and she said over a period of time. And that's going to guarantee you two marks. Right. Next bit, it says, suggest one ways in which a cash flow might be useful. Now, whenever they ask this question, there is just one simple answer. And all you put is to get a loan. And just to make sure of it, it say get a loan from a bank. Because banks normally ask for a um, cash flow when they're going to give you a loan. Right. There is a question mark up here. And we're going to try and work out what the answer is to that question mark. Now, pause the video first of all and try and work out what you think the answer would be. But turnover is another word for money in. So we've got whatever number that is, that's money in. Take away this payments is money out. And they're saying their net cash flow is minus 220. So if they, what, what number would they have to have got in for, it'd have to be a number, take away 920 equals minus 220. So that means they, that number must be smaller than 920 if it comes out as a minus. So what I did, I would do... Um, um, if you've got one of those fancy calculators, you can just do minus 220 um, plus 920 and you'll, get, and you'll get your answer. But the answer should be um, 700 because 700 take away 920 equals minus 220. So that's the answer. Um, it's a bit of an annoying one with minuses in there, but you've just got to think the number has to be smaller than 920 for it to come out as a minus. So that's the answer. Let's go through these questions quickly. What is meant by the term turnover? You can just say money in. Now, normally, I wouldn't say so short as that, but it's only worth one mark. Right, it says calculate Janine's expected turnover for October. Well, I just did that, and the answer was 700. But always show your workings, just to make sure you get the marks. Right, what do you see about this next question? And we're not going to go through it again. It says... She's decided to improve her expected cash flow position, outlines ways she can achieve this, and discuss whether or not each is likely to make a position better. Now, this time it's worth eight marks. Before, it was worth six. And it, for two, if you put two good ones, you've got six marks. So for eight marks, I'd say you need to make at least three points, at least, and then do a final judgment at the end of which one you think is best. So the things you can always talk about is you could do things like materials, you can make cheaper, you could um, reduce workers' wages or sack people. You can increase advertising. You can increase your price. But of course, the problem with increasing the price is less people might buy it. But those are the sort of things you can always talk about. Right, you should be getting fairly decent at this cash flow forecast now. Um, so if you want, you can just try and do this one on your own without me helping you. So pause it for a second and then see what you think. Okay. If you pause it and then you're back again, the first thing you've got to do is try and just complete the shaded areas. Right, just to help you. Turnover is money in. So absolute jokers will just see that's 2,000, 2,000, 2,000. They'll just write 2,000. They'll be wrong. Don't do that, right? Turnover, it's saying that they had payments of 2,250, right? So that's how much money they, they cost them. And they have a net cash flow of 50, so if they come out as a positive, this number at the top must be bigger than this number. But how much is it bigger than by if they came out with 50? Well, if I write here, it is 2,300. You can see that 2,300 take away 2,000... One sec. 
2,300, take away 2,215 equals 15. So that is your answer. Okay, here's the next one. Um, materials. Now here they haven't given you any information at the top, so you're going to have to find it out. You know that that number plus that number must... This number here plus that plus that must equal 2,100. This number is 1,500 plus 50. So we know we're nowhere near the 2,100 yet. So what I did was I typed in 2,100, which take away 1,500, and then take away 50 as well. Because I've, I've got that number, I've taken away this one and this one, and it came up to 550. Is that? And just to check that you're right, you know if you put 550 plus 1,500 plus 50, it will add up to 2,100. Okay. Um, you've seen this question before. Cash flow forecast is a prediction of money in and money out um, over a period of time. Suggest one way it could be useful. Remember, you always say to get a bank loan from, yeah, a loan from a bank. What is meant by the term turnover? You know, is money in. So what you'll see from these past paper questions is they ask the exact same questions every single time. So if you understand them now, you'll be absolutely fine with um, cash flow.